if you will believe the principles that I'm sharing with you, you will be very, very surprised. Hallelujah. The fact that you do not see a way, don't say there is no way. See, in life, all that you see is not all that there is. Your limitation is not everybody's limitation. Are you listening to me? See, this is the thing I've learned about life. Many people take their limitation and build a doctrine out of it. And say, this must be the... No! The fact that you were limited in an area does not mean other people must be limited. So let me share with you some things. I'm teaching on the concept of establishment. Guiding us on what steps we are going to take. By God's grace, I prayed earnestly this morning and I prayed that God will give everyone here a road map. Are you listening to me? So that as you are stepping out, you know with precision what to do. Proverbs 24. Verse 3 and 4. Can someone read it? Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24 True skillful and godly wisdom It says True skillful and godly wisdom Alright It's a house It's a house A life A life A home A home A family A family Built Come on Are you reading that? Is it your Bible? It said true skillful and godly wisdom A house a life, a person, a home is built. So how is a home built? How is a destiny built? Help me please. This is interactive. The Bible says true wisdom, skillful and godly wisdom, a house. That house can be a life. That house can be a family. That house can be a destiny. Read on, sir. And by understanding. And by understanding. It is established. It is what? So how do you get established? Understand. By understanding. Alright? On a sound and good foundation. On a sound and good foundation. And by knowledge. And by knowledge. Shall its, shall its chamber. Of, shall its chamber. Of every area. Of every area. Be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Be filled with treasures. So the Bible tells us about wisdom. The Bible tells us about understanding. The Bible tells us about knowledge. Through wisdom, a house is built. But that's not enough. By understanding, the house is established. And through knowledge, the rooms are filled with all kinds of treasures. Say through wisdom. My life, my home, my destiny is being built. By understanding, I am being established. And by knowledge, I walk in every blessing. Hallelujah. Through wisdom. It didn't just say through prayer. Hello. It didn't just say through fasting or through going to church. Through wisdom is a house built. By understanding, it is established. But knowledge attracts all of the treasures into it. And that house can be a life. That house can be a destiny. That house can be a home. That house can be your destiny. Hallelujah. What does it mean to be established? The word established means to be grounded. To be stable. To be founded. To receive stability in your life. When we say a young man is established, what do we mean? That he is grounded, he is founded, he is stable. You have attained unto a level of stability. And this is what I will be discussing. So what next? When a student comes to any university or institution of learning, when you graduate, what next? What is the next biblical step to take? Hallelujah. Unfortunately, the school only teaches you how to go to school and graduate. Whatever else, you find that out for yourself. So, what is the next step 
when a godly person comes to school and you graduate as you're smiling tearing your last question paper and rejoicing what's the next step to take many people at this point let me tell you something through the years i've had the opportunity to counsel a lot of people the moment they finish school they are looking for my number i have i must see you i must see you and you say what they say i'm, I'm scared say did you attend any meeting throughout your stay say, yeah of course now but you attended conventions you shouted glory my life is blessed now fear comes say i conquer fear say it i cast out fear but you see you don't just cast out fear by saying fear go you cast out fear by walking in knowledge whatever you do not know you will be afraid of it hallelujah let's read on a wise man is strong okay no no i, I didn't mean read on i mean let's continue so i'll be talking about the biblical concept of establishment the moment you step out the next thing for any young man to do is to begin to pursue establishment say establishment the moment you are done with the university the next step is to begin to seek and to pursue establishment hallelujah and there are parameters that the bible gives us to be able to show if a man or a woman when i say a man now i mean both male and female is established so right number one your spiritual life the first area that you must seek establishment is your spiritual life many graduates step out of the university and forget about god they leave god on campus or they leave god in their rooms and they step out into an aberration they call reality let's be real now let's be wise now go to abuja go to lagos go to Joss, go to portacourt and see so many zealous graduates some who were fellowship presidents go and ask them now about the things of god they have no they don't respect god again they don't honor god again they are still going to church they are still reading bibles but that reverence that honor that faith that you know that the word of god you were confident about the word of god hallelujah so the first area of establishment is that you must come to a point where you minister to yourself and say as for me and god oh i am one with him forever hallelujah a graduate steps out of the university after three months you find out the kind of vulgar language suddenly the faith languages that you used to use become foolishness now hallelujah and we begin to embrace all kinds of demonic languages from people that think they have experience they tell you you are just graduating your blood is hot i've been here four years four years of being broke four years of being a failure four years of being running away from god And you allow them to begin to mentor you in all kinds of nonsense. And they tell you now in Abuja, let me tell you what we do. Go and get your 30,000, get Brazilian hair, be nice. Be nice to anybody you see with Jeep. Don't say it doesn't matter. And you begin to say, eh, so this is how they do it here. Say, don't do it now. After three months, someone who used to sing here and say, Lord, I believe your word. The word of God, what you used to call faith becomes foolishness now. Hallelujah. The first area of establishment is not looking for a husband or looking for a wife or looking for a job or looking for a business the first area of establishment is to come to a point in your life where like job you vow to yourself and say though he slay me yet will i praise him if you love god just because of the job you will get or because of the ministry you will get or because doors are opening up to you or because your brother has promised you and said this london you must come write your exam and see you, are, you saw london on your last paper you saw the bridge you saw everything london bridge is falling down that's all you are singing and say lord you are faithful simply you are tying god's faithfulness to something that you think you will get you must come to a point where you are addicted to god not just that you are born again 
not just that you are serious with God, you must have an unquenchable passion for God. Passion beyond money. Passion beyond husband. Passion beyond ministry. Are you listening to me? Every time I look at a graduate that has finished for a while, the first thing I want to know is, how is your spiritual state with God? I don't care whether you got a job in NMPC or whether you became PA to Good Luck Jonathan. How is your state with God? That's the assurance I have that you will last in whatever success you are receiving. Hallelujah. Because you are going to find yourself in an office that you may be the only Christian. The only real Christian. You may find yourself in a community and an environment. The Bible says, ye are the light of the world. You are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Hallelujah. So what is the next step now? Begin to search for God. There are many of you that need to give yourself one or two weeks break. Many of you have already packed your bag. From this meeting now, you are going home. You better stay back and go to court this night. And carry your Bible, your jota, that you have never read. You have recorded every message and every conference. Carry it now and dust it. Hallelujah. And go and just go and pray in court. Take a night vigil and pray in court. Just pray glorifying God. Oh, Sheba Kabaladabai. Lord, I love you. I mean it when I love you. I love you with my whole heart. Thank you for what you have done. I make a vow and a commitment to live for you for the rest of my life. Job or no job. Husband or no husband. And God will say, you are saying this to me. You say, God, I'm saying it to you. I mean it. Hallelujah. And you say, Lord, other people came to this school by their wisdom. I came by your grace. I finished by your grace. It is that grace that will have to take me out. And Lord, I thank you. I bless you. Give me grace to love you. Give me grace to love you. Because suddenly you wake up one day and find out that there are three children running close to you. You say, where are you coming from? They say, daddy, say me. When did I get married and give birth to three children? Suddenly one of your child becomes sick. And you don't know what to do. You are confused. You are sitting at home. Why? Because although you may be rich, you are not founded in the knowledge of God. What happens when your children get sick? Hallelujah. What happens when there is a challenge in your life? To be established, listen to me. To be established is not just to come to a point where you feel that, ah, um, you have a job. For many people, establishment is money. Can I tell you something? If money becomes your primary pursuit in life, you will die like a man. I will repeat it so that you will hear it. Because many of you are doing like you didn't hear it. If money becomes your ultimate pursuit, that all that drives your life, there are people who move in the direction of money. Money takes them to Abuja. Money takes them to everywhere. They are looking for national cake. What cake is better than the one that the Bible has told you is prepared? He says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. So your first area of establishment is not just establishing your relationship with God. Making up your mind and say, Lord, all the other reasons I have given as to why I love you. I was pursuing you while on campus because I was afraid of carryover. Thank you, Lord, for helping me. Now, I repent and I make up my mind under the God of heaven that I will live for you for the rest of my life. You know why I'm saying that? Many of us came to know the Lord only in the university. And the reason is simple. Because for many of us, our parents were just casual Christians. So we did not get the fire. Is that what you want to transfer to your children? I know what my children will receive. When I call my child, my child will stand here. I saw a little girl bringing her tight yesterday. During, during Koinonia. And I said, oh dear. Did you pay your tight when you were small? Did you even know what tight was? Imagine if you knew the things that you know now when you were small. You would have been light years ahead. Hallelujah. 
your passion for God. I'm asking you a question this morning. How much of God do you love? When you step out and there's no coin on here every Friday again. I, do you know that some of you will go to a place where you will be the man of God in that place? You who is looking for spiritual nourishment, you are now the man of God there. You have to look for messages to preach. You never believed. You thought that, okay, me, my own, I'm just in welfare department. And then they come and say, Gladys, please, for this period of three months, you'll be the one sharing in this fellowship. Hallelujah. And then you forget. You know, people can work for God and do a lot of things and forget their relationship with God. Look at me. Anything that takes your relationship away from God is the devil you should cast out of your life. Including job. Anything, any kind of job. I don't care what it is called. Whether it's NMPC, uh, KRPC, whatever. Anything that will affect my relationship with God. I tell you the truth, I don't want it. Because God is the lifeline of your life. Look at me. See, there is nothing called job security. There is only word security. No job has the capacity to secure your destiny. In one moment, the person you are calling your director can be fired. How many of you heard about the retrenchment of workers in Oceanic? Oceanic Bank, many. How many of your loved ones have been fired? Today they are glad they are going to the office. They didn't do anything. Oh, welcome to the rude and wicked world we live in. You must not do anything against anybody. Someone just gets up and purposes in his heart that as far as I'm concerned, Selena will not prosper in this office. Hallelujah. And then they begin to write a letter of query. Everything you do is not good. At that point, what do you do? Can I tell you something? Look at me. I am telling you this. Whatever will take his place in your life, whatever will steal your time with God, I will never, never take on a job or a destiny, including preaching, that will take his place in my life. Are you listening to me? Is he your everything? Is he your everything? Before I begin to give you keys of success, that's the first parameter of establishment. So by the time you finish school, now you have time, go to God and say, Lord, I'm not just coming to pray, I've been praying every time. I'm coming to draw strength and say, Lord, after 15 years, I will still have this zeal. After 15 years, I will still have this zeal. The Bible says, and God knew Abraham that he would teach his people the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. That you say, Lord, you have put an anointing for politics in me. Let's settle it here, me and you. I'm not going to any Babalao's place. I'm not going to, to loot from every public. There are some of you, the way I'm looking at your eyes, the way I'm looking at you, if you get into public office, you will only be nice for the first six months. After that, you will forget. Can I tell you something? I'm having the opportunity to shout at you now because maybe tomorrow I may not have it again. When you become a senator, say, ah, ah. Is it uh, Joshua? Joshua Koinonia? I say, oh, I remember. And then God will remind you and draw your ears and say, let's go back to the secret place. Remember where you are coming from. Hallelujah. You may not, what I'm sharing with you may not make sense now. But I tell you, you will thank me for what I'm sharing with you now. Say in the name of Jesus. I love the Lord. I have passion for Him. Passion for the house of God. Passion for the things of God. And in the name of Jesus, nothing, no one will take the place of God in my life. Whatever takes the place of God in your life has destroyed you. I don't care if it's money. I don't care if it's marriage. I don't care if it's relationship. I don't care if it's business. I don't care if it's ministry. I don't care if it's politics. Whatever it is. Say amen.
So your spiritual establishment, your knowledge of God, number two, the pursuit of your assignment, still on that spiritual establishment, the pursuit of your assignment. You are not established until you truly know what it is that you are on earth to do. What am I here on earth to do? Escort others. Many of you escorted people from 100 level. You saw people rejoicing. They just shouted as your roommate. Ah, I found my place in life. You say, okay. Oh. And it has never really mattered to you. You just say, all I know is when I get married, the man must find his place. Maybe God just told me to submit. Let him not find his place. That will go wherever he's going. Can you flog it out with God in the next few days? that you have in Zaria and say, Lord, like Jacob, I will not let you go. You must speak to me, oh. If it is true that I am not a biological accident, men are finding their place in life and you are here just escorting people. Can I tell you something? Revelation of purpose gives you focus in life. Those who are weak-willed are men who don't have purpose. So they follow this group today. Tomorrow they follow this group. Anybody that looks successful, you are just following. You must be able to stand your ground based on the revelation of what God has called you. What is your assignment in life? The problem you were created to solve. The problem you were created to solve. Every one of you was sent as an arrow by God from eternity into time to solve a problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The problem you were created to solve is your assignment. What will the world know you for? That you gave birth to a stubborn child that is giving the whole world headache today. Do you know that every terrorist was giving birth to? Forget about your Dudua story. Everybody was born of a woman. Hallelujah. When you don't find your place in life, you will keep escorting others in destiny and getting frustrated that they are finding their place in life. Say, in the name of Jesus, I was born for a reason. I don't know if you believe what you are saying. Say, in the name of Jesus, I was born for a reason. I have an assignment. There is a problem I was created to solve. And my generation will receive that solution. My generation will receive that answer. Imagine what the world would have been without the right brothers. No aeroplane. The gospel will not go anywhere. Are you listening to me? Imagine electricity. Who discovered electricity? Faraday. Imagine if these men did not give the world their input. Hallelujah. Those who invented cars. Those who brought the idea of hospitals. Antibiotics. You've studied them in school. Imagine if all of them did not pour out their input. Many of you watch cartoons and you laugh. And you are entertained by it. Do you know that was somebody's assignment? Somebody came and brought that to be a blessing to people. This mic I'm holding... Is blessing you today because it was somebody's assignment. Are you listening to me? This keyboard is helping us worship the spirit. The mixers, look at all of these things. Is somebody's assignment? What will your world know you for? What is your assignment? Don't be jack of all trade. I can do everything. Me, I can do plenty of things. You better settle down and find out what God has called you to do. Hallelujah. What is your assignment? If you cannot tell me what you have been born to do in one sentence, you don't know it yet. Are you listening to me? I tell you the truth. It's better to offend you now and, and hug you after the meeting. If you cannot tell me what you are doing on earth right now in one sentence, then you do not know it. I bought books discovering your potentials. Releasing your potentials. Three most important things, Mike Mudok. I sat with these books and said, Lord, you must tell me what I was born for. You must tell me what I was born for. I'm not a non-entity. 
you must tell me what I was born for. Can I tell you something? Many of you are waiting for an angel to just fly and come and say, Now, Selina, it is for this time I have called you. Don't press. Don't press and say, Lord, if you don't meet me, I'll meet you. The most important thing is that two of us should meet. Hallelujah. What were you born to do? Because your prosperity is in your assignment. Your wealth is in your assignment. You stop competing the day you find your place in life. Competition is a sign that you have not found your place. Because the best of any man you can be is second of that man. I can never be uh, Pastor Alpha. I can never be Bishop Manasseh. I can never be Bishop Stan. I can never be Aaron. I can never be Gladys. So when you find your place, you are you. Say Amen. What is your assignment? Write the issue of assignment seriously and take it. All of these things are part of your spiritual establishment. What is your assignment? What were you born for? What problem? There are many of you lying in you right now. Listen to me. Are businesses and conglomerates that will solve the problem of unemployment in this country. In you, seated here. But do you believe it? In you, there are many of you that there are books. There are books that will liberate nations literally lying down inside you. Dr. Miles Munro said, the richest place is not the gold mines of South Africa or the oil wells of Nigeria and the, the, the East, but the graveyard. That's where many generals have died with potentials that can change the world. All the men of God that have blessed you today, imagine if they did not discover their assignment. I tell myself, I say, Lord, imagine if I did not discover my assignment. Look at the number of people that have been born again. Look at the number of people that have been healed. Look at the number of people that have been saved. Look at a platform for you to hear the word of God. Hallelujah. I'll never forget 2005 Youth Conference. Christ Embassy Youth Conference. We're there with Bishop. While I sat in that stadium in Lagos and I heard Pastor Chris teaching and he was talking about your purpose and your assignment, I began to walk in some of these things and I looked at the crowd in the whole stadium. I said, all these people came because of a man. Hear me, friends. Can the world gather like this one day to hear you? Will you have something enough to give your world one day? That people can pay and say, I am coming to hear a man. What is in a man? What is in a man? Once upon a time, nobody will come like this to listen to me. What suddenly happened? When you find your place in life, you find your place of honor. You find your place of lifting. You find your anointing. You find your crown. You find your glory. I tell you, there is no competition. It's an anointing that will follow you. There are many of you here. There are songs. I was listening to Frank Edwards. And CBN was interviewing him. Look at the blessing that young man has become to this nation. Once upon a time, he was nobody. I was following the Dunamis Pastors Conference. And when Samson came up and was worshipping, he was just worshipping in that atmosphere. And I said, look at a man who has discovered his potentials. Are you listening to me? When you look at the lecturers that come, and as they are lecturing you, they are just speaking, no notebook, no nothing. And they have had a track record of building generals. They have found their place. When will people tell you thank you? If nobody has been telling you thank you, something is wrong. Don't rob us of what we were born to receive from you. Are you listening to me? Don't die with the gift that should bless us. Who are the next Tiger Woods? Who are the next generals? The next Warren Buffett? The next Steve Jobs? There are many of you seated here in the secret place. Where no one hears you, you hear the voice of the Spirit. Every time you watch great men in, in TV, you wish, you know that you are part of that line. 
that line has not finished. Something in you tells you. It told me years ago. It was the voice of the Spirit. When I sat in the congregation and heard men speaking, there was a voice that said, Son, the place of your destiny is there. Not just among the crowd. Son, one day you will stand among the great. Many of you are hearing my voice now. And as I'm speaking to you, the Holy Ghost is telling you, hear this guy. Hear this guy. Because this is the voice of God. Tomorrow we will watch you on television. When you are delivering a speech that will liberate nations. Some of you will stand on UN platforms. And you are speaking. Some of you will stand being bishop of churches around. And one day you will have the opportunity to speak to people. What problem were you born to solve? Could it be that the Savior of Nigeria is sitting and listening to my voice? Could it be that the people who bring justice to our Senate is listening to me? Only God knows the future. Only God knows the future. Could it be that a, a president's wife, a governor's wife is here looking at me? You may not even know. You may not look like it. Could it be that there is an Esther that God will take to the palace for the sake of liberating a generation? Moses, Abraham, Samson, Deborah, Esther, Isaiah, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, Paul, name them. Men who found their place in life. Jeremiah was told in chapter 1, he said, right from when you were in your mother's womb, I called you and I ordained you to be a prophet. He said, do not say I am young. Facebook has brought many to the Lord Jesus Christ. Facebook has brought many people's husbands to them, wives to them, jobs there. There are many people today, many businesses cannot thrive without Facebook. But it was the idea of a young man, 28 years old this year. Hallelujah. What 8 billion US dollars. Once upon a time he was nothing. And he got up. Read the story of Grefara. Grefara was a millionaire at age 12. 12. What were you doing at age 12? At age 12. At age 13, he was sitting on the board of six companies. A board of directors for six companies. T.L. Osborne started preaching at age 17. He was 18 years. He married his wife 17 years. What were you doing when you were 18 years? You were quarreling with your parents to go and correct driver's license so that you can show... Your, 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 your colleagues that you can drive from demonstration secondary school. But look at what your colleagues were doing when they were 18 years of age. Hallelujah. Say, I have an assignment. Say after me, I have an assignment. There are many of you here that there are songs you are supposed to bring that will change the world. Michael Smith. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Let it rain. Different songs. Don Moen. Ron Kenoli. C.C. Winers. Judy Jacobs. Who are the next Benny Hins? Does that mean if Benny Hinn dies, we're in trouble? If Reinhard Bonke dies, are we in trouble? Who are the next Reinhard Bonke? The university that we have, is this the last one we are going to see? Or there is a university inside your spirit that you are going to bring out and bless the world? He is standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns. He reigns. Our God is an awesome God. There are secondary schools inside me. There are business institutes inside me. There are apostolic centers inside me. There are mega auditoriums inside me. 
There's the salvation of millions of people tied to my shoulder. There's the healing and the deliverance of millions tied to my shoulder. There are doors of destinies and nations we need to tear open. There are many prophetic words that are inside of my spirit. I can't die. I must go to be with the Lord empty. When I have emptied everything that can be emptied. There are scholarship programs inside you. There are orphanages that some of you will build. For some of you, the next operation blessing is coming from you. There are new banks. What if the, the, the director of GT Bank did not build? He's late now. Oceanic Bank, Bank PHB. You are banking with them today and you are happy. Don't you know it was the audacious destiny of certain people? Once again, see, I have an assignment. I have a problem that I will solve. There are many of you that will arise and produce one of the first Christian record label company in this country that can grant gospel artists opportunity. There are many of you that will establish probably one of the largest television stations in the world. There are some of you that will single-handedly launch your media satellites in space. Single-handedly. But do you believe this? Or have you allowed the mindset of Nigerians to reduce you? We are just talking of your spiritual establishment. This is what separates the men from the boys. This is what separates graduates from destiny shakers. Hallelujah. Covenant University is one of the best universities today. Not only in Nigeria. There's the Redeemers University. There are other universities. Bingham universities. These universities were locked up in the bowels of great men. If they did not release it, some of your loved ones will not go. Thank you, Lord. So the first area of establishment is where? Your spiritual life. Your pursuit of God and your pursuit of your assignment. That's the next thing you should settle before you even start anything. Number two. The moment you sort out your spiritual life, the next thing you should be looking at quickly is your financial establishment. Say after me, financial establishment. Can I tell you something? <laughs> Look up. I've had all kinds of gospels about money. I've had all kinds of sympathetic teachings about money. People have said, don't be this, don't be that. You will suffer in life when you are broke and poor. You can never help the poor by becoming one of them. It's not called sympathy. It's called foolishness. Are you listening to me? It takes money to preach the gospel. It takes money to get married. Guys, it takes money to build, to rent an apartment where you keep your wife. It takes money to pay the school fees of your children. Unfortunately, we don't do trade by butter again in Nigeria. So your tubers of yam will not take your children to school. I don't know who, which devil misled the church into believing that prosperity is demonic, that prosperity is satanic, that prosperity comes from... I mean, I get irritated when I hear many messages preached by people. Let me tell you something. When people begin to castigate prosperity, they have tried and not gotten it. And so, they vent their anger at everybody. There are many angry preachers, angry businessmen, angry husbands, angry wives. There is no man I know except few people who just went to go and work in a company or get a job simply because he's a faithful citizen of Nigeria. Even NYS, if they don't give you a lawi, you will quarrel. But it's called youth service call. 
Hallelujah. The moment they present jobs to people, many people are looking at the one that has the highest pay. Someone can leave jobs today or can leave Zaria and go to River State. What took him there? Job. What is he going to get in the job? Yet we all pretend that finance is not important. Let me tell you something. Deliver yourself from that mindset if you have it. Because everyone I know who refused to respect money is poor and broke today. Everyone I know. What you don't respect, you will never attract to your life. The next most important thing in your life after the pursuit of God, I tell you, is financial establishment. Can I, can I tell you something? Look at me, please. Financial establishment was not designed to be a lifetime pursuit. Are you listening to me? You were never designed by God to be chasing money till you go to heaven. You are supposed to come into a place called the wealthy place. And then there begin to accomplish your assignment. And bless others. And establish the reign of Christ. Take the issue of your finances very seriously. So that you don't be the person begging on the street. And lining up in front of politicians office. More Christians have left God as a result of lack of money than too much of money. Are you listening to me? Many of your parents have stopped you from marrying somebody that you know is godly. Why? Because he doesn't have money. He carried his one shoe and came and greeted your mother. Your mother just called you when he went out and said, let me warn you before it will even start. Let me kill it here now, now. The way we suffered, you are, you are not seen, Abi. You want to continue like that. You must make up your mind. I told myself I will never be poor in my life. I settled it with God. I said whatever the price is, I will pay it. I will pay it. In tears, I will pay it. Thou, Psalm 66 verse 12, write it. Can someone read it for us please? Psalm 66 verse 12. You cast... You cast men's right over your head. King James, please, can I, can I get King James? I want the King James version. Anybody? Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. But thou, in the midst of it, you brought us into a wealthy place. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. There were momentarily times of pain, times of tears, times of, of, of building, times of, of stress. But in the midst of it, because we believed in you, you brought us into a realm called the wealthy place. There is a realm called the wealthy place. It's not a state, it's a realm. The psalmist said, Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire. We went through water. That you are going through fire or water is not an excuse. There is a place called the wealthy place. Hallelujah. Visitors come to greet you in your house. You cannot even attend to them because you are afraid. You think it's money they are going to beg you. They just came to greet you. You are already frowning. How many times have your father's told you to go and lie and say go and say I'm not around. The person just came to greet. Because he just came. How many people hide promotions? They say God has blessed us. Don't tell anybody. And your father goes to withdraw 100,000 from the bank. This is how they squeeze the money and run and go and lock it. What, what kind of life is that? Thou has cost men. God did not bring you to give birth to children and put people in Poverty and suffering and penury. But you must believe it. Prosperity gives you focus. So you are not distracted. When you are prosperous, you focus. Your prayer points are reduced to only worship. Prosperity gives you focus. Focus. 
Hallelujah. Poor people are very distracted. They have too many things to worry about. They are worrying about these school fees. They are worrying about this. The, every kind of thing. But when you are blessed, it gives you focus. Say Amen. When you watch people on TV, you see a husband seated and his children playing with him for hours. Play with your children like that and see whether your boss will fire you. You see that? But it's because that man is blessed. He's not worrying about where the next meal will come from. I assure you, many, many homes today are in trouble because of financial issues. 90% of divorce cases are financially related. So do you think financial pursuit is important? Yes, it is. And the first area of financial pursuit is cash flow. Right? Cash flow. Stop that ambitious of trying to be a billionaire in one day. Who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to be a billionaire in one day? Calm down. The first thing you need is cash flow. What is cash flow? Consistent flow. Let there be something coming in regularly. You don't know how to handle 100,000. God will not give you 10 million. I assure you, if you saw it, it's just a vision. There is a training that will take you there. God can never bless you beyond your means. There are many of us, the day you hold 1 million, you will not greet anybody again. Hallelujah. The day you hold 1 million, you will give yourself a name. Money talks. They should call you money talks. Okay, money talks. How are you? Even your mother or your father, because you've held one million. God will never have read my Bible. He will never bless you beyond your ability to manage his resources. Hallelujah. So cash flow. And the easiest way to get cash flow is to get a job. Write it. Get a job. Many of you who have been casting, listen, listen, please look at me. Let me balance something. I know that because of the whole jobless situation in Nigeria, we are training and motivating people to get jobs. I mean, to, to establish businesses and to be entrepreneurs. And many of you see people getting jobs and you laugh at them and say, God forbid me, work. I'm more than that. Sit down there. Don't go and get a job and humble yourself. The easiest way to begin to jumpstart your financial life is to get a job. Because where you want to work is already established. Are you listening to me? It's a different thing if you have a business idea and it has started bringing you consistent cash flow. If cash flow is not coming, get a job. Even if it is for two years. You are starting a business, for instance, or a company or whatever, and it's still shaky, it's not standing strong. Back it up with a job. By the time you are established, you can, you, can, you can leave the job. I see many arrogant people passing complimentary cards to everybody everywhere. Ah, I'm in business. I have a company. The name of my company is this and that and that. You are not producing anything. You say you are a consultant. What have you done that you are consulting? I'm a consultant engineer. I construct for this, for that. Is it true? You think I will give you my house to build for me? Am I joking? I love my wife and my children more than that. There are too many arrogant people in Nigeria who do not want to start small. Who have been deceived by the get rich quick thing. Everybody wants to get rich quick. And you will not sit down. There is a little primary school here. You finish school. They say start. How much is the salary? 4,000. You say look at me at my level. Even when I am on campus. I was eating food of 300 naira. When life whips you, whips you, you will look for that job and humble yourself and stay there. Do you not know that you will get more than money? You will learn discipline and experience. When you get a job, you will know what it means to be accountable to somebody. You will know what it means to get up. There are many of you, you get up when you want, you sleep when you want. But an office will tame you and bring you to the place of discipline. There is more than money that you receive. You know how to handle hostile people. Many of you have, have lived around believers and they are, that's all you know. Hallelujah. Now you step in the midst of somebody and the person looks at you and says, can we go and boogie on Friday after the program? Ah, in your mind you are saying, I've lived a holy life, oh, I've served this thing. I've, 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 
the person says, come on, grow up. This is Nigeria. Suddenly, you are beginning to learn how to manage people. When you work, it teaches you the discipline of many of you are careless over money because you don't work for it. It's given to you. So you can do everything you want to do. 10,000 naira comes, you just blow 7,000 naira and you are happy. Say, rejoice, Jare, God bless my father. It's not my fault. When you begin to work, at the end of the month, if they give you 10,000 naira, you will know how to work well with it. You won't go to the market and buy trainers of 15,000 when your net worth is 10,000. Wisdom comes when you work. Are you listening to me? There are many careless people. They didn't do anything for their money. They just woke up and found themselves in it. And that's why they don't respect people. You see somebody walking and you say, how can you be walking and you are getting 10,000? Hey, hey, you are teaching. You read the uh, medicine and you are teaching. Shame on you. Because your uncle is a politician. And he said, come and be following me. You don't do anything. You just escort. If they share anything, they say, oh, yeah, take your own. Is that a job? You are not learning anything. Can I teach you something, friends? Rise gradually in life. When you, when you fly beyond your means, let me tell you something. You have created a new standard that even when there is no resource, you will be forced to live up to that standard. There are many of our parents today that have not attained onto certain standards. When visitors are coming, they borrow money to buy chicken. They borrow money to buy everything to try to prove to people that they have attained onto some standard. Can I tell you something? If you come to my house and I'm drinking Gary, there's no reason you should drink malt. There is no reason. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself, not better than yourself. If I do not count it to be robbery to drink Gary, that's what I have. You will not put me under any pressure. If you don't like me for the Gary I'm drinking, find your way and go. My house is not a shop. Hallelujah. There are many of us who are putting, right now, there are some of you who are putting yourself under pressure to try to show people that you are a graduate. You're already planning to go and carry 40,000 naira and buy one suit. How much do you have home and abroad? Hallelujah. Say I'm receiving wisdom. Financial establishment. Start small. Don't come where God blesses you with one four hundred thousand. You just go to Asokoro or my Tama in Abuja and say, This is where I want to stay. Ah. He says by faith. I I, 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 I provoke the word. You will be you will be embarrassed. See. There are many foolish things that young graduates do. All in, you see someone, you don't know the story behind his glory. He may be a young man looking like, like you, but you don't know what it is he has gone through. He said, we went through fire. We went through water before we got into that wealthy place. Hallelujah. Someone who is a millionaire, he's eating food in, in Sheraton. You come with your hundred thousand, you too. You are eating food in Sheraton. You go out and you are crying. See, listen to me. When the owner of Arik is in Sheraton eating, he is eating because he has designed a system to return his money to him. The people who is, who are, is paying money now, they are going to enter his flight and give him back his money in less than five hours. They have designed an, uh, an autonomous wealth system. Their financial equilibrium is always balanced. And you get up knowing nothing about money. Small money you get. You say, ah, big, big thing. I'm going to buy Blackberry. 150,000. That 150,000 would have changed your life forever. Am I preaching to somebody? You must learn wisdom. There is no crime in starting small. Faith is not foolishness. There's not much money coming. You are a young man. You started getting a little job. You are eating in the restaurant every time. Why wouldn't you buy one mudu of rice? One mudu of beans? With 500 naira that you can blow a meal with, you can prepare something that will last. Is that correct? You see, at my level, I preached yesterday on leaves without food. 
Oh, every day you have shown people that you, you can afford to go to the restaurant. One day you are in the restaurant and you see three of your friends. They come based on the confidence that you have given them. You say, okay guys, help yourself. They say, thank God, I don't always get it. I will maximize today. Please, Capel, please this. And you are sweating profusely there because you have created an impression that you cannot defend. You will look at a man who is a millionaire and you see the person still entering bus transport. And you who God just bless you, you started working three months ago. You say, me, there's a jeep that I saw I must buy. What do you think is making that pain? See, when you see people who have gone ahead of you and they are not doing some things, find out why first. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? Financial establishment. If it is to get a job in a school, please get it. Are you listening to me? If it is to go and serve, get it. If there is no job coming, try to do a business. Try to do something that can bring you cash flow. No matter how small, do not despise the days of little beginning. How can I be frying meat pie and doing this? I went to school. Is it not better to get 5,000 with dignity than to go and sleep with a man and come with 100,000? And come and bring tithes that we don't know where it's, where it's coming from. Don't envy everybody you see getting prosperous. Find out. The Bible says, and I, I do not envy any man who does not live by the principles of God. I don't care what he has. I've seen too many temporal things in this life. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I take my finances seriously. Read books on finances. Many of you are trusting God to bring money. You don't know anything about budgeting. You don't know anything about planning. How many of you know things about budgeting and planning? Short term planning. Long term planning. Goal setting. You must know these kinds of things. Otherwise, how do you want God to bless you? Hallelujah. Every money that comes to you is going into your mouth. Everything that comes to you is entering your mouth. Puff, puff, bones. Anything that comes is going through your mouth. And now you want to marry a woman. That's why you'll be a very stingy husband. Hallelujah. When you begin to plan your finances, there is, there is maturity that begins to come in. This is the problem we young people have. You look at your parents with millions in their account, but they are modest. They are careful. Every time you pass Mr. Biggs, you must stop. How much do you have? Nothing. God just blesses you. After Sunday, somebody gives you 2,000 naira. I just tell your friend, let's go. Yet you see your father or your mother collecting their salary. And they'll take something out small. They'll say, we'll keep this for the month and save the rest. Practice the culture of saving. It's too early to start extravagant expenditure. Don't let these things people do deceive you. See, you can buy suit, you can buy Gucci, you can buy any kind of thing and deceive people that life is working. That's the madness that is going on, especially in Abuja. There are too many liars, broke people who try to look like they have things. They come to church, you see somebody holding three blackberries as if it's a briefcase. Having suits, having everything. That guy does not have up to 10,000 naira in his account. After service, he's standing. He cannot even charter a car back home. Because we feel that if you give people an impression, I'm a businessman, and you come in with a suit, and you hold all kinds of complimentary cards, and say, I have five companies, they are registered with CAC or GAR. That's not what we are asking. You are broke. Period and full stop. You can't help your mother. You can't help anybody. You are not being a blessing to anybody. Your life is not improving. You are not growing. You are not serving in the house of God. You are not blessing anybody. You are broke. Do something about your finances. Don't be ashamed of where you are. If the money you have is... If you have 100 naira, go and buy cocoa. Uh, what was the name? That, that, there's that joint. You know that joint? That joint on your way to Daraka. There's one place that some three mama sell. You think I don't know it? You see, that's the problem. Many of you see success and you don't ask for the story behind it. There was a time Zinc House was our, was our joint. 
is now close to Stambik. Zemi is shagalinku. My my body is, is very my body is too sensitive. Your body is sensitive based on what? Because many of you are graduating and you will come and you will meet a lot of people who are finished from their own universities too. And you see somebody dressed and all of this and sometimes you will be intimidated. The little that is coming in. You will be saying, Kai, this one that I'm looking at, if I'm a villager, I'm always wearing a... I'm not saying you should wear rags. But do not try to assume a financial level you have not yet gotten there. The word of God will bring you until then. Stay clear. Because it has gotten people into all kinds of ungodly things. Ungodly things. And they pierce themselves with sorrow. There is always time for everything in life. Hallelujah. But you must do something about your finance. Make it very conscious. Make it very serious. Ladies, don't sit down praying for a rich husband to come. There's nothing wrong if God blesses a rich husband. There are too many ladies sitting down and hoping... Every man that is coming, you're already looking at him head to toe. That's why you put pressure on the guys who try to dress as if, as if they own Nikon Noga. And then the guy comes to tell you, well, my father just brought a jeep. Can you imagine, as young as I am, driving a jeep and the lady is happy. Oh, God, where is the jeep? Three months, the jeep will not come. One year, the jeep has not come. It was locked in Kotono. And then they start relationship based on lies and nonsense. If I have one room, come to my one room and see it. The day I, I have a duplex, you will know God has blessed me. There are many of you that can never take your friends to your house. You take them to your friend's house and just change your picture in the parlor. Say, I refuse to be under pressure. The blessing of the Lord will bring me to the wealthy place. Number three, the next area of establishment you should be pursuing is your marriage to settle down as soon as possible. Look up. Write it and look up. Because some of you are finished writing, you are still looking down. Look up. You must look up. Ah, yeah, you are in trouble with me this afternoon. Look up. The Bible advises men to enjoy the wife of their youth, not the wife of the days of their pension. The wife of what? Your youth. See, as much as possible, listen to me, one of the reasons why many people are afraid is because there are many guys who believe. There is a mindset that I want to destroy. Deliverance is going to happen in this place right now. There is a mindset I want to destroy. And that mindset, we got it from the things that we see in our society right now. What is the mindset? It's the mindset that a guy must be, what our concept of establishment is, you must be a millionaire, millions in your bank, at least a jeep or two with a duplex. Then you say, eh, my soul, fine rest. What did your father have when he married your mother? Faith! And one small house to start with. And she came into his life. Do you know why many homes are broken? Let me tell you. Because the woman does not have any investment in the success of the man. She can never say there was the day I held your hands and we prayed together. Oh, I wanted to hold Bishop's hand. <laughs> let me hold Selena's hand. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm coming to that. You won't jump that topic. I'm coming. Hallelujah. Where you can say there was a time we prayed together. And there was only 20 naira that we had. Do you think if that man becomes blessed, he will disrespect you? There's nothing wrong if God blesses you. But I tell you the truth. There is blessing in riding through prosperity with someone. That you can see. There are many people. If you saw me 10 years ago. 10 years ago. I'm sure if I ask some of you. Before I finish. Ah, hold your peace. Please. Just hold your peace. Let this be sufficient enough. Silence. What they say? Silence is the answer to, to a fool. 
There are many of you that the people you want to marry, it's not because you like them, you just like success. And they seem to be the, the clearest portrait of success that you can identify with. Ladies, you must learn to see the future in the guy. Many people don't use, they don't use their spirit. They sit down, me, oh God knows, me, God knows. If he has to do this, you have to ask me out in Chicken Republic. And the brother comes, one shoe, but he has feet. He's praying with you every time. You are seeing, you are praying together. You are speaking in tongues together. You are prophesying together. He's falling under the anointing closely. You think he will be a failure? Hallelujah. There are many men that when they got married, I tell you, they didn't have much. They didn't have much. The society puts so much pressure on men. Right now, do you know how much it costs to get married? You don't want to imagine. No, am I speaking to some of you? I know some of you, it's not interesting you. So much pressure. To the point that they ask, how much do you have in your bank account? How you don't have a stable job? You don't have a this? Do you not know that the Bible says, He that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor, not before. She's supposed to come in with an anointing to help him. That's why there are some men that can never... See, when you see the way some men hold their wives, they know what they, know what they have gone through. When they were going through fire. Before my father got a job, my mother was selling eggs. My mother started working before him. Hallelujah. My father, my father, my father loves my mother like his life. Because they have gone through too much in this life. There are many ladies right now. Your mindset about marriage is what has stopped people from coming to marry you. You know why? Because you are looking for your wealthy place. You are not ready to pay the price and build and cry together and hold the brother's hand and say, you may have only one trouser. I'm not ashamed. I saw the needle and thread. No problem. It will be over. I say, me, my class. Hey, your class. What, what happened to your class? Are you the first person of your kind? Hallelujah. Brothers, don't put yourself under useless and unnecessary pressure to try to prove to the lady you are, you are whatever. You will kill yourself for nothing. There are many guys that are doing that. You borrow what? You borrow bla Blackberry. You borrow shoe. You borrow car. You borrow everything. You live in a world of falsehood and lies. Is that how you want to take your life and go out of this place with? You must learn to see the future. God will never assign someone to your life to meet your need of the moment. He sees the future and sends you based on that future. There are people today that you see that look like nothing. I tell you, watch out for their lives. Because you are not there when they are praying in secret. They may not look like anything, but when the glory of the Lord, Jesus said, when you see the Son of Man in power and glory, now you are seeing the Son of Man in His tears, but a day will come, you will see the Son of Man in power and in glory. Every guy that comes around you know, every guy that, there are some of you, the standard you have created, ladies, the only person that can marry you is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Christ of Nazareth. He's the only one who can marry you. Because you have created ridiculous and unreasonable standards. A guy will come innocently and ask you out. You keep posting the guy for months. Even you, you cannot tell why. Why you say you are praying about it? The guy you have been dreaming of, if he asks you, will you pray about it? They are praying about it. You must pursue to settle down. And let me tell you something, friends. It may not come the way you want it, but you, may, you must see the revelation. How many of you can make up your mind and say, Mio, Lord, whoever you send into my life, ladies, 
even if he has not attained unto anything, we will pray together. We will cry together. I may even have more money than him. I will not be afraid to say, ah, take 20 naira and take bike from Sabo to this person. Or go to church. Because you know that the word of the Lord is true. And one day, after you have gone through fire, and you have gone through water, he will bring you to a wealthy place. Guys, are you ready? Because I'm coming for you right now. Are you listening to me? There are some of you guys, I don't know what you are looking for. I don't know what you are looking for. The lady must be this, her eyelashes must be this, and that, I must see if you go eight, I must see if you go, whether, whether, <laughs> The lady doesn't speak English very well. She doesn't... Oh, doesn't speak English very well. Or the lady doesn't do this and that. The lady doesn't do this and that. The lady is not that. It's not that. I was embarrassed. Can you imagine? She cooked food. There was water inside. How long does it take somebody to learn how to cook? Can you not see the future? Hallelujah. You see a Christian girl who is praying in tongues. Is, is getting born again. You know that this lady loves God. What are the temporary things that are there that cannot be fixed with time? Hallelujah. I've never seen her put before. Now she doesn't put his name. If she doesn't have the money, will she die? Or is it the same style? What is your business? If you don't like her, pass, go. Leave somebody else. Hallelujah. And you line all kinds of ladies. I mean, saying this one doesn't fit my standard. This one, whose standard do you fit? You, you, whose standard do you think you fit? You are stubborn. You are disobedient to the word. You are not even disciplined. Yet, look at all the ladies who are mentioned as my standard. Listen, let me tell you right here and right now. Hear it and, and hear it very well. There are no perfect relationships anywhere. Every relationship has the same potentials to be made or broken. Every relationship. It takes both of you working it in faith and the operation of the word of God. So the lady you are looking for has not been found. Or the guy you are looking for. Can I tell you something? You will graduate from this school and feel sorry for all the guys you have been saying no. Because when you go there, you don't know how... Brothers, am I minis? Am I creating room for you this this afternoon you see the brothers answering they have been crying quietly in their hearts <laughs> hallelujah you must learn to see beyond the now you must learn to see beyond the now Listen, a time comes when in your marriage or in your home, love becomes more than a tingly feeling. It becomes commitment. Many daughters have done well, but thou excellest them all. So you need to settle down as soon as possible. Are you listening to me? Guys and ladies together. When you pray, guys, after you pray, oh Lord, I thank you for what you are going to do. Stand up and go and get a wife. Hello? Did you hear me? After you finish praying, do what? Stand up. I didn't say sit down. Stand up. After you have counted the cost and pray, stand up and go and get a wife. And say, ah, she will disrespect me. I don't have so much money. That's the revelation you have given yourself. Or the revelation culture has given you. You must settle down. Hallelujah. Begin to plan for your marriage. What kind of home do you want? Many of you are there shouting, Oh God, when will he come? Have you planned how your home will be? Have you planned how you will be a blessing to him? Hallelujah. Begin to prepare for your marriage. Begin to settle down. 
There are many of you, you see little children, a, a, a small child who will pee or, or, or poo in front of you. Yeah! And you want to be a wife. You want to marry in two years. A small child does it. They say, clean it. And he, 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 my body. Or you see a woman, a mother put her nose on, on her son's nose to draw the mucus. I say, hey, Jesus. Jesus, tell your neighbor, grow up. Say it, grow up. Hallelujah. As a guy, you get up in the morning, you wash five clothes. You say, I had a very busy day. Don't marry. Please, don't marry. Had a busy day. You wash five clothes and two calls and you want to be great I want to be a leader over how many people and you plan to have seven children <laughs> have Marian have one say in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I, have I have a beautiful marriage I raise godly children, raise godly children. after the fear of God there are many of you who have been postponing. Satan has been telling you, you are too young. Both guys and ladies. Now like play like play, you are finished school. You are too young. 50 years. You are too young. 60 years. You are too young. 70 years. Until your whole generation goes. And then you, you marry your, your classmates classmate's daughter. <laughs> oh yes, it's done in America. Another thing I'll say about marriage, I've said it again. Make sure you marry someone of the opposite sex. <laughs> Make sure the person you are considering to marry is not like you. There's no, we, we, we will not take chances with this issue. We are, we are going to say it. Because let me let you know that there is gay marriage even in Nigeria right now. It's just that it's secret. They are not, they've not yet had the audacity to open up. Do you know which of the countries now, I cannot remember, but they not only gave them rights for gay marriage, but they, they come to your church so they can come they can come and say this is the church and you if you do not wear them they will seize your license as a pastor so they can come and say yeah now you are the one who, who who will join us that's why when i wanted to shake stanley that time i just turned i came to selena and i cast i cast out <laughs> that spirit run away from all of those nonsense because they are happening everywhere. Ninety percent of people that do all these gay things are it's not for pleasure, it's purely for diabolical reasons. Do you know that? There are men that sleep with men around. These are all requirements for their own prosperity. Women that sleep with women, all kinds of madness and nonsense that goes on. But the Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are His. And let every man that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. There are people who marry animals. And sleep with animals. Because they are looking for prosperity and looking for this. Male and female. He created them both. Male and what? Not male and male. Not female and female. Male and female. He created them both. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined to not his, his business partner, his wife. Wife! Not wives. Wife. And they too shall become... Because there are many people, there, there's, they have branches of wives. There's one in Abuja. When he goes to Portaco, there's one there. When he, when he goes abroad in France... There's one there. 
when he's tired from the business meeting, there's one there. Let me tell you something. And there are men of God who are involved in that. Pastors, bishops, with several concubines scattered around. When you go for a conference like this one, when you finish and you are tired, then there you go and cool off. There's a woman waiting for you there. In the and you know, let me tell you something. They put you in a five-star hotel. There are certain packages. You pay for everything and just refuse the one you don't want. Part of the, some packages give you access to women. And someone comes and knocks and I say, can I help you? You say, no, no, no. It's, it's part of the package of, of, of where you are staying. There's no time I would have shared with you the experience that I had in Delta State. <laughs> the next time. I didn't do anything. I'm holy. What do you think? <laughs> Hallelujah. God doesn't send you to worry. Don't go there. Don't go there. Hallelujah. I finished ministering and I was in my hotel room close to the airport. Hallelujah. I ordered for a meal. Just worshipping God, giving Him praise for a wonderful meeting. And suddenly, a lady knocks at my door to bring the meal. And then I came out and I just opened the door. Ha! In my mind, I said, what am I seeing? This lady was practically naked. I said, are you a chef? Is this how the chef in this hotel dress? I'm telling you. She was only wearing her, her underwear. God is my witness. I'm not exaggerating. She brought the food and then she forgot to bring water. I said, no problem. I collected the food. I she said, she's going to go and bring the water. True life story. She said, I would have just left it out quietly and nobody will know. Hallelujah. You want to marry, you must be ready to be faithful. And the lady went and brought water. I gave her change. Later on, she came again. When I locked the door, I locked it. And I just climbed the bed. And I was sleeping. At about 1 a.m. in the night, brothers and sisters, people of God, at about 1 a.m. in the night, I had a knock. Why should you be knocking somebody's room in a hotel by 1 a.m.? I said, what is this? I just opened the door. You know, what you call prostitute here? This, this, there's nothing going on in this place. When I saw that lady, I don't want to describe to you what I saw. Ah, God. Hallelujah. I made a covenant with my eyes that I won't see a naked lady. That's what Job said. I joined Job. I said, Job, your, your, way, your way is the way of wisdom. It's better than to go and pick crane and casting and say, Lord, I cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. And I saw this lady and she said, sorry, sir, that am I the person in charge of the reception? I said, room, room two, you are seeing my room number and you are asking me around. I told her, don't do this again. I tell you, she said that somebody came to camp her so that she can whether do whatever they want to do. And then the guy later didn't come. And that she'll help her come and walk somebody out of her room. Ah. Colorful and is bright. I must get there. Beautiful, glorious. I must get there. I didn't die in Zaria. I will leave Zaria and go to worry and go and die there. My future is bright. I must get there. When I stood and I looked at that lady, I knew she was there was there was such a manifestation of the spirit of lust. I knew this one was not physical. Are you listening to me? In my mind I sat down. I said this is how great men fall. In that one instant, 
I didn't overcome her as an apostle. I overcome her as a word believing child of God. Backed up by resilience to close that door and to lock it. And I vowed that that door will not open again till morning. If you are ready to get married, you must, read, you must be ready to settle down. And many of you, you are almost married, but you see a beautiful lady pass. You tell your friend, you are covering my view. Where will you be disciplined? Hallelujah. The fourth area of establishment is what I call structural establishment. Structural establishment. Thank you, Jesus. Structural establishment. What does that mean? A house, a car, an office, Healthy destiny relationships. Say after me, structural establishment. Please look up. If you know God, and eventually you don't have a car, you will live under the bridge. You don't have a house. You will live under all... There are many bridges in Nigeria. You can choose one of them and live under there. Are you listening to me? I preached a message in 2008 called Come Out of Your Father's House. Listen to me. Guys, as you go back home, begin to warm up to pack out of your father's house. Are you listening to me? There are many of you, you love comfort so much and sometimes God will have to push you into the place of destiny. You love comfort too much. You don't know what it means to be responsible over your a house rent. You don't know what it means to manage resources. There are some of you guys who have never bought anything with your money. Everything they bought it for you. Mommy, as you travel to London, come with my shirt. My, my wife would like to see it. The Western world is really spoiling a lot of people. Hallelujah. Buy your recharge card, your recharge, your rechargeable lantern, and put. Buy your small fridge, put in your small room. Start it. Buy your, your carpet, one, one five. Put it in your room. Be proud of it. Are you listening to me? You don't have anything except your little laptop or your Bible and your candle. No problem. It will bring you plenty. If you don't know how to live in a one room, you will not know how to live in a three bedroom. Because let me tell you, with every level of prosperity, there's something called maintenance. You must maintain blessings. It's not just for it to come. You buy a jeep and somebody scratches it, you go to buy one light. They tell you they sell it in a set. It's 250000 That's why you know whether you really want a jeep or not. Structural establishment. Guys, you must get a house that you can live in eventually. Maybe not immediately. Hallelujah. You, be, you must begin to work at it. It may be one room, but it's your place. And you are proud of it. Are you listening to me? Every lady turn and look at the guy close to you and say, come out of your father's house. Say it, he won't harass you. Come out of your father's house. Hallelujah. Begin to plan. Look at me. How many of you right now, there are many of you that you don't even have up to 10,000 naira in your account. And it's not like people, it's not like doors are not opening. You are just used to eating everything, your resources, your everything. Be disciplined. You can never separate success from discipline. The road to, to success is the road to discipline. Anything cannot be it. 
You can't eat everything, go anywhere, do anything, and expect lifting. No, it doesn't work that way. Say amen. As much as possible, look at me. As God blesses you, plan to get a car. I'm planning to get one. We are all planning to get one. Hallelujah. Help your wife, guys. Let her not have to be entering buses. Oh, when I see the way bus people do with people's wives. Moving, that they moving, enter and, 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 and moving, push and moving. They are just looking for space. And the man says, Sorry, please let me take it easy. I need to sit near the DC. I may need to speed. They say, Please, move in. Get a car. A time will come in your life when a car is not luxury, such as now. I tell you, our lives, cars, a car is not a luxury right now. It's not luxury. If you bought a car in demonstration, that would be luxury. But not now. Hallelujah. Build relationships. Build relationships. There are many of you, you don't have any friend. You walk alone on the street. You are just talking to yourself. You did that from 100 level till now. With your roommate, you have never gisted with your roommate. For one whole session. You just come and go and lie down in your room and read. How are you? Fine. Are you okay? Yes. Can I help? No. You must learn to build healthy and godly relationships. Please write it. Because you will learn in this life that there are some things money cannot do. Hallelujah. There are some blessings. The Bible says, when David became king, he was searching for anyone in the house of Saul to bless him. And not finding any, they got one guy who was crippled by the name Mephibosheth. And he said, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And Mephibosheth, I call it blessed by association. Listen, your association can bless you. Are you listening to me? Your association can bless you. One of the greatest things you need to do as you strive for establishment is to build healthy relationships. There are certain people right now, don't let them go. You were in the same department with them. Hallelujah. Get their numbers. We used to have something in secondary school called a uh, slum book. Thank you. You write something, although people write every kind of thing. What do you like? Beer. What is your like? Ladies. Your dislike? Men. I'm not talking of a godly a godly maintain contacts do you not know that there are some people who got jobs because they never knew that their roommate had an influential father also and while they were praying god just tell you call call that friend or someone can get a job that they are not interested in and they can call you and say come and stand in this position see maintain healthy and godly relationships you have quarreled where you were in school. Settle now as you are going. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to maintain relationships. Now look at me. When I talk of maintaining relationships, I'm not just saying relationships with Christians. Are you listening to me? Because God can use cyruses to bless you and open up doors for you. Maintain relationships with people. Keep in touch. How is it going there? Ah, you're, you're in Lagos now. How is everything there? You, have you gotten a job? The person tells you, let me even tell you, there are three jobs. Say, ah, ah, hey, you are lucky. The person says, no. In fact, I was thinking of somebody that, that will come for the other one. Come for, come for the job. I will introduce you. The person is my uncle. And a door will just be open for you like that. See, money cannot do everything. There are some things only relationships can do for you. There are some doors, no matter how rich you are, doors of ministry, doors of business, money cannot open that one. Relationships. There are many people on the, during their weddings, they don't have cheap breasts. 
Because everybody that can do chief bride made for you, you have driven out of your life. This person is not nice. This person is not a nice friend. If you find yourself complaining about everybody, the problem is you. Everybody cannot be wrong. There are people that, if they are friends with you for two days, they are already saying something. Hallelujah. Okay. If, if, they, if they are with you three days, they are programmed themselves to see the bad in everybody. So during your wedding, you just sit down. You are scrolling your final year album. Later you say, ah, damn it, damn it. Please, damn it, help me. Can you be my chief bridesmaid? You have all the money, nobody to rally around you. Have you seen families like that? When they are in trouble, they cry alone. There's nobody to help them wipe their tears. Don't live that kind of life. Maintain relationships. Maintain relationships. I learned that from my father. My father has relationships with people everywhere. In the military, in the court, in the police station. Everywhere my father goes, Ah, ah are you, how are you? Now in my mind I say, this man, how, where did you come and know this person again? There are some destiny helpers and destiny partners that have been floating around your life. They may not have the anointing you need, but they have access to people that carry the anointing in your life. Hallelujah. We have to be quick so we'll round up. I hope you have been receiving something. 